Okay, well, welcome everybody. Welcome to the uh, uh, Anti Pacific uh, Longhorn Launch uh, webinar uh, or meetup. Uh, we'll talk about that as we go through just some introductory comments. Uh, but yeah, welcome. Uh, my name is Brian Goodman Jones, uh, and I look after Rancher in the Asia Pacific region from a, a sales and customer perspective. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Longhorn. Um, Longhorn is a CNCF project. Uh, that Ranch has been a part of. Um, but yeah, joining me today is uh, Gaurav. Uh, Gaurav is based in Melbourne uh, and he looks after field engineering for the Asia Pacific region. Uh, and we're also joined by Wendy Chung, who uh, is a senior manager for global product marketing. Uh, Wendy's also based in Sydney. So you have the, the Australian contingent from Rancher with you today, or some of the Australian contingent with you. Uh, so that's who we are. So first things first, just some, some housekeeping. Uh, I did mention the word webinar, but actually, if you've been to a Rancher um, virtual event before, you'll know that we sort of run them more as a meetup uh, than a webinar. Uh, and the reason for that is, you know, this is not, not really a product pitch or a sales pitch. Uh, we really try to make these uh, events uh, more about <clears throat> um, technical knowledge, uh, industry knowledge uh, about a particular technology and, and where it's at and what it's, you know, I guess, what, what, what's happening with that technology. So yeah, this is more of a meetup rather than a webinar. So we will be taking questions as we go. I'll be looking at the uh, monitoring the question box. Uh, and if there's a particular question that's relevant, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll sort of pause the, the speaker and ask the question. So yeah, so given it's a meetup, a couple of rules is, you know, we'll try and get done on time. Uh, it might be quicker, might be longer, just depending on, um, you know, how, how we go, how many questions there are. Um, as I said, questions are always welcome. We like to keep this, as I said, more of a meetup type scenario. Uh, there's no bad questions. Um, you know, this is an introductory session and a, and a tech deep dive session, so there are no bad questions whatsoever. Um, we're going to demo and demo some more. So the large part of this session will be a technical demo and, and technical run through of the of the, the of Longhorn as, as a product and technology. So there'll be lots of demoing. Uh, and given that we're all sort of virtual these days and, and doing things remotely, you know, things may break, um, you know, people may drop out or drop back in. So please be patient. Uh, if someone does lose connectivity or whatnot, uh, you know, just they'll, they'll be back. Um, but hopefully nothing goes wrong today. Uh, but just be patient and, and stand by and, and we'll keep going as best we can if, if something does happen like that. So yeah, so this meeting is being recorded. Uh, we record everything uh, that pretty much Ranch does. It's on our YouTube channel. Uh, it'll probably be made available uh, this time tomorrow, I'd say, on our YouTube channel. Uh, there's also the, the the one that the US did that's also available on our YouTube channel uh, already. So if you wanna go and, and um, see the, the original one of this that was done a couple of days ago, then you can also look at that one as well. So I guess a little bit more housekeeping. Uh, we're also on Twitter, so uh, if you're if you are on Twitter, uh, post a photo. You know, show us what you're doing, show us where you're at. Uh, I think everybody's at home these days, given COVID. So, Rancher Meetup is the hashtag. Uh, we'd love to sort of see photos and, and let people know that this is going on. Uh, the other great thing from a housekeeping perspective, uh, and, and again, Rancher being open source and Longhorn being open source, uh, we do have a Slack community uh, that's that's free and open source. Um, Slack.rancher.io great place to go to get questions answered, to ask questions, to meet other people who are using Rancher, Longhorn and other CNCF components. Um, so yeah, join that if you haven't joined and uh, yeah, great place to, to access resources and other people uh, who are using Rancher. I think we're nearly ready to get going with the, the real deal. Here we go. So so the agenda today um, is, is uh, I can think housekeeping is more or less done now. So the agenda today is I'm going to introduce Wendy, get Wendy to take over shortly, and, and Wendy will introduce Longhorn. Uh, you know, what is Longhorn? What's it about? Wendy will then talk about how Longhorn fits into Rancher and, and what Rancher's doing. Uh, then Gaurav will take over and uh, deep dive us into Longhorn. And I guess that's really the, the meat of this whole session, um, you know, technical demo and, and, and talk technically about what it is and why it's different, why it's, it's important. Uh, and then we'll leave a session at the end for questions and answers. Uh, but as I said, please ask questions as we go through this um, throughout, and uh, we can we can pause and ask questions as we go. But there will be a large section at the end for for questions and answers, um, you know, if they come up throughout 
the, the deep dive and, and whatnot. So I think that's really the, uh, the, the housekeeping done. So maybe I'll hand over to Wendy uh, and Wendy can, can take it away, introduce Longhorn and what it's all about. Thanks, Brian. So hi, everyone. I'm Wendy. I am the Senior Product Marketing Manager at Rancher. Um, and Longhorn's one of the first kind of products we've, I've worked with um, since joining Rancher a couple of weeks ago, just before the pandemic. Uh, a bit about myself. So I used to work at New Relic, um, looking after the APJ marketing um, for New Relic. Um, and then I jumped ship over to Rancher a couple of weeks ago. So very exciting to kind of see how the open source community works and how tight knit the community is in, I guess, Australia and Asia Pacific in general. So introducing Longhorn. Um, we all may be familiar with some of the struggles with Kubernetes and storage in general. So back in the day when Rancher was a uh, wee pad wagon at 1.6, people used to ask us, what should we do for storage? Um, at the time, storage was like the quest for the holy grail. No one kind of knew what a good storage solution on Kubernetes looked like. Everyone was trying to find the it product, um, but realistically, no one really had a good answer for it. Um, if we fast forward to today, there are many, many answers available to developers and operation folks alike. Um, but Rancher's answer is kind of special because it's Longhorn, which is an open source sandbox project with the C and CF. Um, we've been invested in Longhorn um, and we'll share um, insights into why just in a second. Um, but in a short and sweet, succinct version, Longhorn attempts to address kind of the classic problems that developers experience with traditional storage in Kubernetes environments. Um, we found that our community sees traditional storage as not really lightweight, they're not portable realistically, they're not designed for Kubernetes and they can be quite costly. Um, specifically when there is a failure, the replication of workloads and data sets can be really cumbersome and take days on um, traditional storage. So this is where Longhorn comes in. Um, so, what is Longhorn? It's a solution for a distributed replicated storage inside a Kubernetes cluster. It uses containers as the storage replica and runs on multiple um, and different nodes, making sure that data is synchronized across them and between them um, and presents a single volume to Kubernetes um, when attached to a workload. So Longhorn now at GA is at version 1.0. Um, this version is a very reliable, stable, and intuitive, easy to use um, general purpose container attached storage solution that fits a majority of use cases. Um, but please keep in mind, because this is a version 1.0 and it is a very early stage version, it won't fit every single use case out there um, currently. We don't want to pretend that um, version 1.0 is doing something that it can't yet. Um, but historically, it's actually the development of the product has been for a while, almost as long as Rancher Labs has existed. So let's go into the Longhorn history a little bit more. Um, if you've been following, I guess, the Rancher story, um, you might have come across what Longhorn's about through just natural um, investigation. Um, so Longhorn story is one of a very steady incremental maturity um, up until the point it was donated to the CNCF. Um, why did Rancher Labs donate Longhorn to the CNCF? Um, because we have a commitment to the open source community and our CNCF membership was a demonstration to that commitment. We want to help drive the community to adopt Kubernetes and keep encouraging the community to innovate. Um, we saw Longhorn as a project that wasn't just about Rancher anymore, but realistically what the community um, really needed. So Longhorn became a CNCF SAM project um, at the time of the 0.06 release, so in 2019. Um, 
in that short amount of time, Longhorn has made significant, uh, significant stability and performance improvements. Um, so you can see here, our current version at 1.0 has the ability to attach and detach volumes for more than 20 nodes, uh, 20 volumes per node. Uh, and we've reduced from a couple of hours to a few seconds to do so. Um, another statistic is at 0 0.06, so when it was donated to the CNCF, um, it was only able to scale up to 40 nodes per volume, but now at GA, it can scale to 80 volumes per node um, and even beyond. The story here is there's been a long, a long history of development and investment from Rancher, um, and our commitment to the open source community is driven through our donation of Longhorn to the CNCF and our continual investment till this day um, to the Longhorn project. Um, Gaurav will run through some of the roadmap features that are coming um, your way in the near future. Um, again, a fully baked out roadmap is a commitment to the open source community um, from the Rancher team. Um, so how does Long Hong kind of fit with the overall Rancher ecosystem? Some of you may already be very familiar with this image on screen already, uh, which is Rancher's Cube Cake. Um, the Cube Cake, for those that may not be familiar with it, kind of is separated into two layers. Um, in the dark blue section at the bottom of the screen, we've got the certified Kubernetes distribution that Rancher supports. Um, it includes everything from Amazon EKS to Azure's AKS to Google's GKE. Uh, for those on, operating on the public cloud. We've got Rancher's RKE for those on-premise workloads. And we've got K3S for those looking to operate on the edge um, for desktop workloads, um, looking for a lightweight distribution of Kubernetes. Just above it, we've got in the lighter blue section, the centralized management section, which is where our flagship, our flagship product Rancher sits. Um, Ranch is the open source and one of the industry's most widely adopted Kubernetes management platform. Um, and you can see there's kind of three tiers of benefits that Rancher operates on. So we do everything from simplifying cluster operations um, and infrastructure management to kind of helping um, ops manage their security, authentication and policy. Um, as well as have a very vast library of integrated, integrated tools and services um, that we integrate with. Um, so you can see in the red boxes, this is where Longhorn fits within kind of our Rancher ecosystem stack. Longhorn is the preferred shared tools and services offering that integrates with Rancher. Um, we like to kind of place it similarly with some of the vendor partners we work closely with, like Prometheus and Grafana. Um, and as Longhorn matures as a solution, we expect it to become increasingly more and more integrated with the Rancher platform over time. Um, as I mentioned before, Gora will be sharing more of what the roadmap looks like and how some of these integrations might look like in the future um, with the roadmap um, later on in this made up. So for all of those on the line, what does, how does, how can Longhorn benefit uh, the IT ops and developer? So why Longhorn? There's kind of three principles we want to highlight with Longhorn. Um, firstly, Longhorn's a simplified Kubernetes persistent block storage. So it offers a one-click deployment process from the Rancher console. Um, allowing you guys to deliver scalable and reliable distributed storage across your downstream Kubernetes clusters. Um, as a developer, this is easily manageable for you guys because we want to, um, because the product's easy to use and intuitive. Um, the second point is the intuitive backup and snapshots. Uh, with Longhorn, it allows you to easily automate your snapshots and backups so you are working with the most up-to-date data store in your Kubernetes production environment. Um, through its through Longhorn's intuitive uh, user interface, you also can manage all of your backup and snapshots easily. 
Finally, um, Longhorn offers fast recovery, um, simplifying your disaster recovery strategy by replicating your volumes quickly within um, the platform itself. For example, you can easily create read-only remote replica volumes in other Kubernetes clusters and define their RPO recovery point objective and RTO. Um, alternatively, you can set up a disaster recovery volume just in case your main cluster fails, um, which allows you to build um, resiliency into your Longhorn volumes and overall Kubernetes environment. So for those that are kind of decision makers on the line or technology leaders, um, why should you look into Longhorn? Um, being an open source um, solution, cloud native economics is something that frequently pops up. Um, your teams don't have to spend money on external storage array solutions, reducing your overall cost into technical and architecture um, costs. Um, Longhorn itself is enterprise ready. It comes with full support when you bundle it with um, Rancher um, and it's a scalable solution across any complex environment. You get persistent storage every, everywhere. So your teams are able to leverage storage solutions that might be usually reserved for traditional large enterprises with expensive hardware, which Longhorn is trying to break down that barrier. Um, Longhorn also brings cloud native storage technologies into Kubernetes clusters running anywhere. Um, but finally, and probably most importantly, it's helping improve developer productivity and efficiency. Um, you're equipping your team with the ability to manage data repositories seamlessly across multiple Kubernetes environments. Um, ultimately, this minimizes the amount of overheads that you require to administer persistent storage for Kubernetes. Um, and your devs teams can focus on what really matters, which is building great applications. Um, whilst Longhorn works extremely well alongside Rancher, um, should you want to use it independently, that is also an option, um, so you are not locked into a single vendor ecosystem. So it's a super flexible, super available storage solution um, that has very low barriers to entry for anyone interested in um, a storage solution for Kubernetes. So let's move on to expanding how Longhorn and Rancher kind of fit together and why they should fit together. So with any new solution or new release that comes out for a product, I guess the common question that always comes up is why? In this case, why Longhorn? And you're probably asking, why is there a camera or iPhone camera and a DSLR on screen? Um, but like with any new invention, the question is really, what's the unsolved problem does this product address? And in Longhorn's case, how is it adding value to the Kubernetes ecosystem and community? Um, the value we see it is, and why Rancher is so invested in Longhorn, is that there are a lot of really powerful storage technologies out there already on the market currently you know, from external storage providers to even more modern cloud native solutions. All are very mature, highly powerful and capable, but not everyone needs that kind of features, functionalities and power. Our question really is, why do you need to carry all of that weight around? And this is where the camera analogy kind of pops in. You know, on the right hand side, you've got your DSLR, super highly functional, featureful DSLR, you know, you can get 4K video out of it. You can pinpoint the exact frame rate you want, what lens you want to put on it, um, customize the aperture, all of the, all of the nitty gritty details that you want. Um, and then on the left hand side, you've got the ever so handy smartphone camera, in this case, the iPhone camera. Um, so, how we position Longhorn? Longhorn is something that's intuitive, simple, easy to use, easily re reliable, similar to what the smartphone's camera is. It's something you gravitate towards every day because it's reliable, it's intuitive, and it just works. Um, 
a DSLR is great for those that do want to invest in a little bit more highly complicated featureful solution, but it's not necessarily the most available and the most intuitive option. And this is how we see Longhorn's value within the ecosystem, because it's a simple intuitive storage solution that's accessible and reliable to the community. So let's expand on that relationship a little bit further. Um, we already know that storage admins of today have a lot of responsibilities on their plate. Um, and with that in mind, a lot of organizations don't even have the dedicated resources um, for storage administrators. Often it's the DevOps or the dev engineers or the SRE teams who kind of have to manage the storage capabilities as part of their already very extensive day-to-day -day responsibilities. The, rancher, uh, the value of Rancher and Longhorn is that we can help alleviate some of these responsibilities as a solution that allows you to manage the storage requirements across Kubernetes. We're looking to provide a comprehensive solution that doesn't take copious amounts of resources or time for teams to run on. Um, some of the features when you integrate Rancher and Longhorn is it's easily deployable from the Rancher app catalog. Um, it's completely 100% open source, both Rancher and Longhorn. Um, it's recovery centric, so we've got snapshots, backup features all built into it. There's a very intuitive UI. Um, it's a community-based project that's still owned by the CNCF and shaped by the needs of the users that can contribute if they wish. Um, but it's also fully supported by Rancher. Um, in its purest form, what Rancher plus Longhood is trying to achieve is we're expected to deliver a solution that offers no surprises or complexities for our customers and users to overcome when they're looking for a storage solution. Um, and how we do that um, will be will be up in the next couple of slides where I hand off to Gaurav, who will look at some of the use case examples of um, Longhorn and Rancher. Over to you, Gaurav. Thanks, Wendy. So, so we'll just... I might just, sorry, Gaurav, I might just interrupt and just ask if there's any questions at this stage before Gaurav um, gets a bit deeper. A couple here, there's a, there is a couple of questions here, but I might just wait um, for the tech demo part for those questions because they're a bit relevant towards that that part of the presentation. But, uh, if there's no questions, maybe keep going, Gaurav, and, and I'll save these ones that are here until we get a bit further along where they make a bit more sense. Sure. Cheers. So, you know, we have a couple of use cases sort of, you know, available uh, on the slide right now. So, you know, for example, the first one is the obvious one, you know, where we, you know, we realized was, you know, Longhorn had a really good use case was in use across, like, you know, clusters running in AWS. So if Longhorn offers you block storage, so if you are wishing to use persistent volumes for your workloads in AWS, uh, then you might already know the limitation with the EBS volumes that they are sort of only highly available within the availability zone. Uh, so, you know, let's say if you are run, planning to run a small cluster with say three nodes only, where you only have one node each in each availability zone and you have stateful workloads, then if you sort of you know have a pod which needs persistent volumes, it can't really you know get rescheduled to another availability zone in the case of loss of an availability zone. So that's where you know we realize Longhorn is perfect you know use case to allow you to replicate your data across availability zones. Then we also have this second use case where you know let's say you are running uh, traditional VMs uh, on your private cloud. Uh, and you know you want to consume storage from multiple storage uh, backends within the organization. So again, you know we we found a you know Longhorn could be the perfect use case where you could you know use uh, logical volume management on Linux and then assign you know storage runs from multiple storage providers if you wish to, and then sort of you know 
pro, you know, mount it into a single volume, which is then managed by Longhorn to create further volumes on top of Kubernetes for persistence of your Kubernetes workloads. So it's really flexible. You can see, you know, you the sort of the use cases and how, you know, you can sort of leverage it to, you know, handle some of the common, you know, scenarios you'll find in large organizations. Uh, next one, please, uh, Wendy. So another use case is, you know, uh, disaster recovery, you know, uh, across multiple clusters. So modern applications have to be sort of, you know, be able to run in multiple regions to tolerate catastrophic failures. So Longhorn, you know, solves this problem by being able to replicate data across uh, the WAN to multiple locations asynchronously with minimal, you know, overhead. And to do this, it doesn't, you know, require any proprietary replication protocols. Instead, it just uses sort of NFS or an S3 endpoint to distribute the data. And then you can sort of, you know, use the scheduled backups to restore your, you know, your persistent volumes in a, in a Kubernetes cluster in a different region or, or in a, you know, totally different cloud, uh, you know, if you wish to, and we'll see that in action in a demo shortly. So back to the use case for HA across availability zones. So we have a pod running on node one, which is in zone one A, and it's attached to an EBS volume. So if for any reason there is an there is an issue in one availability zone, all the Kubernetes can sort of you know schedule your pods to to nodes in in a healthy you know availability zone. The pod still, you know, can't function because the storage it needs is tied to that availability zone. So Longhorn, you know, solves this by the way it's architected. It's it's based on the, you know, it's it's you know leveraging Kubernetes to the max. And again, we'll see that in demonstration shortly. And how it does that is by using, you know, a, a Longhorn engine which makes sure there's replicas of your volume available across multiple nodes. So as you can see in this particular case, if if you were using Longhorn, then the pod would be using a volume accessible via the Longhorn engine and the engine would always be replicating the writes. So the, uh, you know, it would be sort of, it's like RAID 1, it would be propagating the write to all the replicas. And if you lost, you know, or say an availability zone, the pod would just reschedule to another availability zone where, you know, it would attach to the copy of engine running on that node. And the engine would sort of, you know, allow it to write to the remaining replicas for that particular volume. And, you know, from a disaster recovery perspective, this is a lot more desirable. And, you know, as you can see, you'll see it's really easy to set up. So I'll quickly switch to a demo to sort of, you know, to actually show, you know, how easy the product is to install and to consume. So I have this uh, cluster, my primary cluster. Uh, I have two clusters set up for this demo. One is in AWS and one is in Azure. Uh, so, you know, I, I really wanted to highlight that Longhorn works on top of Kubernetes. So it doesn't really care how the Kubernetes comes into existence. So this is a cluster we pr I provisioned using RKE and one of Ranch's node drivers. And this is an AKS cluster, which is the backup cluster. So we'll start off by installing Longhorn. So, you know, I've set up a project for Longhorn where we'll sort of, you know, install it. Uh, it's very easy to launch using the Rancher application catalog. All right, so I'm gonna use version one. Uh, so I'm gonna stick with the most of the defaults, but you can obviously, you know, configure some of the uh, default settings. For example, over here. So yeah, I mean, the most common would be the how many replicas you'd need for the storage class. So every time you create a volume, the volume's backed by replicas that hold your data. 
and you know you can control the number of replicas uh, you know there's other things as well for example where do you want to which you know path you want to use on the host for longhorn to be creating sparse files uh, you know any sort of over provisioning or over commitment you would need to perform for for the volumes uh, any cpu reservation you know obviously we would prefer that you do reserve some cpu because your the longhorn pods will be handling all the io requests uh, so these are like the standard you know <clears throat> settings so this one is uh, the backup poll interval so this is what controls the rpo so if you have a backup cluster where you're polling a, a data store for you know changes this is where it detects you know how frequently to pull the backup store to see if a new backup is available and i won't change any of it i'll just stay with the defaults and i'll click launch so this is just a Helm chart that's being installed in the background. So even if you are not a Rancher user, you can still install Long On using its Helm chart. And within a few minutes, we can see that Long On is being installed to your Kubernetes cluster. So while we wait for this install to complete, do we have any questions, Brian, that we can address right now? Yeah, so going, there's a question uh, from Mario. Uh, Longhorn looks great. Just wondering if there are any plans to make Longhorn available to Docker, to be used by Docker Swarm, for example. Uh, so the thing with Docker Swarm is that it uses the Docker volume plugins and Longhorn uh, sort of, you know, only allows storage to be accessible to Kubernetes. One, it runs on top of Kubernetes. So it, you know, there's that limitation at the moment. In 1.3, I think we are looking to allow customers to run Longhorn on a dedicated storage cluster. And then, you know, it might be possible by writing a Docker volume plugin to sort of attach volumes from, from Longhorn as a storage array. Uh, but, you know, it's a worthy, you know, question. I would recommend that you go to our, our you know our github project and log a feature request so at least you know we can track it yeah i mean i think another way i'd answer that question is you know longhorn being a cncf project now we're hoping that it gets adopted by a lot more vendors besides just rancher moving forward uh in the industry no i've seen other vendors now you know presenting on longhorn out there in the industry at meetups and, and things like that so yeah hopefully hopefully it becomes a you know, a, a widely adopted um, project, not just by Rancher. Yeah, so the Longhorn install is complete. We'll just wait for the UI to load. Uh, so this is what the Longhorn UI looks like. I'm quickly going to set up the backup options for Longhorn. So I'm going to say so the backup target needs to be specified which can be a uh, s3 compatible endpoint or an nfs endpoint so i'll specify a s3 bucket that i have um, i'll specify uh, the kubernetes secret holding the credentials to access this bucket and i can click save um we can see there are no backups available at this point in time. There are no volumes, so we'll now deploy a workload to actually use volume Longhorn as a storage driver. So we can see the Longhorn storage class has been created by the Helm chart. So now we can actually start consuming this. So I'm gonna deploy a simple WordPress application. Again, I'm just gonna use the Rancher app so i do need to update a few options so the first one is i need to set a password i'll also need to specify a storage class
Yep, and that's about it. Now we'll wait for the WordPress Helm chart to be installed. Should just take a minute or two. And while that happens, we can see that it should have created two PVC claims. And inside Longhorn, you can also see the two volumes. You can browse the nodes, uh, the volumes. So in terms of the volumes, you can also see the metadata as to where they're attached to you know, the pod as well as the node. Uh, we can also click through to see where the actual you know, copies are for, for your volume, where the actual replicas exist. So I only have a three node cluster. So, you know, I expect a volume on each of the nodes. And, you know, you can see that although the volume is 10 gigs in size, it's, you know, actually just using 128 megs for now. And it's growing. So my DB is up. We'll just wait for the front end to pop through. All right. You can click through on this. And this is the simple WordPress we deployed. I'm gonna quickly sort of you know set up some backup schedules for this volume so it's pretty easy to set up backup schedules we'll all just go click here i can add a schedule for my backup and i'm gonna say generate cron and i'd like it to be backed up every minute just for the purpose of this demo and how many copies would i like to retain so i'll say i just wish to have three copies and if you click through we should be able to see some backups kicking off soon. I'll quickly set the same for the second volume as well. Again, every minute, I'll say okay. I just want three copies. So now we have set up a backup schedule. So in here we should see backups triggering and you know being available. Meanwhile, I'll go to the front end and we'll quickly make some changes to this. So I can write. Uh, blog I shall click publish and I can now view the post and it's there so we've made some data changes which should be persisted here so now you can see my volumes have been backed up the last backup was a minute ago and we'll give it some more time you know in a few more minutes all the changes in this you know cluster should be replicated uh, or you know to an s3 endpoint we should have backups there so while we wait for this, we'll go and look at a secondary cluster. I have a second cluster here where I have uh, already installed Longhorn. So this is an AKS cluster uh, running in US East, whereas my Amazon cluster is running in Sydney. So again, uh, So I do have Longhorn already installed. So we'll just launch the Longhorn UI. 
in here we can see check the backups i've already set this up to you know scan the s3 endpoint uh, for backups so you can see the backups are available here you know uh, it can find those backups what we shall do is create disaster recovery volumes so this instructs longhorn to sort of you know have volumes available which are now being sort of you know synced up with the backup store so it pulls the backup store and applies the delta which you know in turn allows you to guarantee you know a consistent uh, recovery time so i can so as you can see it's started the you know restore for those volumes from the s3 endpoint we'll just give it a few more minutes to make sure that the data here is backed up yep so again uh recently backed up we'll just give it a few more minutes as you can see the backup restore is happening here in a standby volume So while we wait for this, do we have any other questions, uh, uh, Brian, uh, that we can take right now? Uh, yeah, let me have a look. So we have a question from Pablo. Hi, I'm wondering if Longhorn supports specifying different paths on each node. Uh, also, is it possible to set replication to one for testing purposes? Yes, uh, so right now uh, you can change the path uh, to any other path, but for now we only allow you to have one path for Longhorn install which is why we sort of you know showed the ex uh, sort of the example in the presentation using LVM where you sort of have a volume coming from LVM on Linux and you know so if you have to grow that vault disk you can just attach more you know disks to the volume group and extend the LV uh, from a replication perspective you can specify as many replicas as you want you know you can do one you can even go and create multiple storage classes because the replication count is set at the storage class list, you could have multiple longhorn storage classes with multiple replica counts. So let's say one vocal workload, some workload needs a high level of you know availability. You can use sort of you know higher replica counts. Some other workload needs you know lower lower sort of you know amounts of replication. Then you know you can use a different storage class. So you know there is different ways to go about it. Great, thanks, Karov. Uh, if, if, if there's any further questions, Pablo, please just, just post them again. Uh, there's also a question from Vikas. Um, how quickly, uh, hang on, how quickly data gets replicated from one node to another? So Longhorn's, uh, Longhorn engine acts like a RAID 1 controller. So until the data has been written to all the replicas, the, the writing application won't get an acknowledgement that the write's complete. Which is why we do not recommend your, you know, your cluster spanning, you know, multiple regions because the latency. That which is why, you know, the best way to allow sort of, you know, availability across regions is using uh, S3 or a NFS store to allow you to sort of, you know, stage the writes asynchronously and then apply those writes into these disaster recovery volumes in an async manner. Thanks, Gaurav. Cool. Uh, hopefully that answers the question, Vikas. Let us know if there's uh, further follow-on questions. Uh, and likewise, please keep the questions coming uh, if there's any other questions from, from the group. Sure. So what uh, we've given it a few minutes now. I will, let's see. We should have all the rights here. You can see it's applying the latest delta again. Once this is done, I'll activate those volumes, create persistent volumes from from these uh, disaster recovery volumes, and then we shall launch WordPress on a different cloud provider and see if our data is there. All right, so I will go and say activate this volume. And I can do the same for the other volume as well.
Right. So now it's gonna stop, you know, syncing it. And we have some volumes which are here. So now we can use these Longhorn volumes to create persistent volumes, persistent volume claims. So Longhorn backs up the metadata about the PVC as well. So I can use the persistent volumes, uh, PVC claim information. And it will create PVC claims. So it's found the, that it was for a WordPress PVC and it was you know attached to a different volume. I can do the same here. So now if I go back to my Azure cluster in the default project, I should find my two volumes with the PVC claims. So now I can deploy my WordPress app in here. So I'll choose the old password. I will use persistent volumes. I shall use Longhorn. In this particular case, I'm going to specify a PVC claim to use. So we'll use WordPress as the PVC. Again, Longhorn. So uh, because MariaDB is a stateful set, I cannot specify a PVC claim number because it matches the pod name. So that's about it. And we'll click launch. And now we should see WordPress getting installed and reusing the volumes that we just sort of restored from another cluster. Should just take a few more minutes. Yep, the DV is up. Waiting for the front end to pop through. Just waiting for ingress to be sorted out too. Then we can start using this Longhorn install, this WordPress install. So now this is my load balancer that's been created on Azure. Yep, so you can see now the blog's available and all my data is there. And this is my other install on AWS with the same data. So if, because now the replication is broken, if I make any changes to this cluster obviously it won't be replicated to the secondary cluster, but it's as simple as that to sort of you know get Longhorn up and running and do data recovery and disaster recovery using you know the backups available within Longhorn. So this is what we are sort of you know working towards uh, in terms of our roadmap. So the first thing we're looking at is with Longhorn 1.1, we are looking to sort of you know improving the performance uh, of Longhorn itself and also allow the capability to do application backup and restore, which means more dead metadata for the application. 
deployment that was using the PVC is available within the backup. Uh, then we are looking in terms of 1.2, we'll see sort of, you know, even bigger performance gains as we try and move to uh, storage performance development kit to sort of, you know, change the front end in terms of how the volumes are exposed to pods. There's obviously other components as well, like the CSI snapshot support and a long horn CLI. Uh, and further down the road in 1.3, you're looking at you know in introducing different qualities of service, data locality, backup and volume encryption. Uh, again, you know uh, one key thing would be the dedicated longhorn cluster, something that came up in one of the questions, and also ARM support. Uh, any other questions, uh, Brian, uh, from anyone? Uh, yeah, let me let's have a look. So uh, Chris has got a question: If there's any limits on storage sizes? Uh, because Longhorn uses uh, sparse files, so the the storage limits would arise from the the limit or, or the file limit on the underlying file system, uh, you know, where you're creating the sparse files, and then also the biggest, you know, one file can probably be, for example, I think in something like the ext4, uh, we can have. Uh, the biggest uh, volume or the file system size is something around a few exabytes, if if I'm correct. And then you know it allows you to can then have one individual file to be you know as big as uh, a few you know terabytes. Uh, again, it also depends on the block size. So you know there is lots of things it can do. Thanks, Gaurav. Thanks. So look, I hope that that demo was really useful. Um, you know, there's quite a quite a good few use cases there that Guy walked us through. Um, so we do have a time now for for questions and answers. Um, the, the, the easiest way to do that is via the questions chat box, uh, and we can do what we're doing now, whereby um, you know I can just read the questions out and, and Guy can discuss them. So if there's any other questions, please please start dropping them down in that that questions box. Um, if there's no questions, we can just move on and I can wrap up, but, but let's just give it a couple of minutes just in case people do have any further questions uh, or comments or feedback. All right, well, maybe, well, maybe I can keep, keep going in terms of a summary. Uh, and then if there's questions that come up, we can, we can respond. If not, um, you know, jump into the, the Rancher user Slack. I know we put the link up at the beginning. Um, and you, know, you can ping Gara or myself or anyone in the chat, um, and we can, can help answer questions. <clears throat> um, so look, just to wrap up, um, so I mean, the, the exciting thing about Longhorn is is that it is open source, right? It is open source. It's a CNCF project, um, and and it's it's sort of been built around native Kubernetes, right? So I think that that's what's exciting in terms of the potential of of, of Longhorn. Um, one thing just to be to sort of be clear on as well is that um, you know you can now buy a support subscription for Longhorn from Rancher. So if if using Longhorn is something that you would like to do, and you know you do need a 24 by 7 support agreement behind that, uh, then then you know now that Longhorn is GA, we we can offer that uh, from Rancher. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, but just to wrap up, so look, any further information you need about Longhorn or, or Rancher. We do have a quick start guide, um, the, the link's here. So, you know, ranger.com docs, uh, and, and you can kind of find it find it there, but there's a link there. Um, so, you know, please, please go to the docs. Um, they're, they're, a lot of info goes into them. And uh, so, and also feedback's really useful. if You can't find what you're looking for. Um, the other thing just to note about Rancher, uh, you know, everything we do is open source. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of other projects that are going on right now. So obviously Rancher, the, the core product is, is fully open source. Um, RKE, which is the <clears throat> Rancher Kubernetes engine, is fully open source. K3S as well. So if you haven't looked at K3S for edge use cases, you know, K3S is a, a slimmed down, you know, certified CNCF Kubernetes distribution um, for edge use cases. So again, that's another project that, that, that uh, that we, we're working on right now. Longhorn we've spoken about, um, and you know the roadmap is 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 looking quite um, ambitious, and and I think we're going to move see, see sort of some very quick movements on that. Um, nothing to mention actually is you know we did launch a hosted rancher service not too long ago, 
Um, so if, if, if Rancher is something that you are looking for, but you would like it hosted on your behalf, um, then that is something that you know, we, we do offer now um, as Rancher. Um, other, other open source projects that are gaining quite a lot of traction as well, Rio, uh, Rio is sort of our GitOps um, project. Um, and uh, again, gaining a lot of traction, it's in beta right now. And um, watch this space for when that might become GA. I'm not sure if there's, if there's date, timing and dates in GitHub, but uh, check it out that there might actually be dates in GitHub for when that's um, approaching GA. K3OS is sort of, you know, again, just related to K3OS and, and how do you get sort of um, simplified, you know, operating system type environments for edge, low resource computing environments. Uh, Fleet is another one that, that got launched this year. Um, <clears throat> Fleet is is a project that's, that's looking at you know as more and more edge devices um, adopt Kubernetes and effectively become a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, all of a sudden, we're looking at scenarios and use cases where you know instead of you know thousands of clusters or hundreds of clusters, we're talking about you know tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of clusters that need to be managed centrally. Uh, so Fleet is a project that looks at how do you deal with that challenge? How do you how do you manage your clusters kind of like a fleet where you can do sort of do single click updates and single click deployments um, across you know hundreds of thousands of, of Kubernetes clusters. Uh, and Submariner, Submariner is an open source project that you know it focuses on how do you you know um, how do you connect um, networks across Kubernetes clusters um, from an overlay networking perspective. So just some of the projects that they were working on and, and in various stages, uh, I think. Right now, Rio, Fleet, um, and K3S and Longhorn uh, are sort of key ones that are moving very, very fast. Um, other thing we're really big on at Rancher is online learning. Um, so, you know, we do have our YouTube channel. Uh, pretty much everything we do is recorded. Um, you know, so sessions like this, we have monthly meetups as well that are online that generally will will target a particular topic. Uh, we do online uh, training courses as well, uh, and they're generally recorded and on our YouTube channel. So please go there and check that out for, for further resources and, and information about um, Rancher, but, but you know, particularly from a learning perspective, there's a lot of very useful um, learning focused resources there. <clears throat> and the last thing to mention is, if you haven't seen, uh, we recently launched Rancher Academy, which is a free, you know, uh, I, I, not, I was gonna say open source, not open source, but it's a free uh, certification training program uh, where you can log on and complete your rancher certification. Um, as it says there, there's you know video introductions, there's theory work, demonstrations, hands-on labs, etc., and an exam um, which tests your knowledge. So, so if you haven't already done so, please log on to Academy, uh, check that out, get your rancher certification. Right now, there's operator level one, uh, and other courses are on their way um, over the next few months and, and weeks. So keep watch on that, and, and please go there if if you're interested in, in doing that certification. So yeah, so thank you for your time. Uh, I hope that was very useful. Um, please, as I said, you know, log your feedback at Rancher Meetup on Twitter or ping us uh, at Rancher Labs. Um, and yeah, let us know what you think. Uh, we're, we're here to help. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that was great. Thank you, Gaurav, for your time. I really appreciate that. That was really great. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, that was really good insight. and. and sort of high level introduction to what, what Longhorn's all about and why it's different. So if there's no other questions, um, we might wrap up. Um, I'm just sort of keeping tabs here, but it looks like questions are a bit quiet. So thank you for your time. And uh, please, you know, this will be uh, available online uh, probably by this time tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, um, ping us if there's any more information needed. Thank you for your time and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.